All right. Well, guess what? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this little proxy that we've been building. I thought things have been fantastic. So I guess before we begin, it probably is best for me to first give you like a quickie of what I attempted to accomplish here, which is going to be a client can connect to my server. The server takes in that connection. The next thing the client is supposed to send is actually an authentication packet. This authentication packet is going to be who the client is. Now, remember, I'm dealing with TCP connections. This is not HTTP. This is not UDP. This is TCP. So it's reliable. It's in order. And there's no request response model. So I get the auth up. And when I get the auth up, I'm like, okay, I know who I'm talking to now. And I now know that they want to be able to play a game. This is kind of my general idea. And so from there, I'm going to go and check to see what servers are available. If there's no servers available, I ask the matchmaking algorithm to go and produce a new server that this connection can be home to. When the server is up and running and we're finally able to select a server, this connection will then be, uh, or I guess I shall I say, I will create a new TCP connection to the server and then I'll forward on the client auth I'll wait for any sort of like game settings that might need to come back, anything like that. I can forward anything that comes back onto the client. And if either side, a close from the client or a close from the server happens, I'm able then to take that and close down the whole shebang bang I still have some basic handling that needs to happen, like what happens if the client just disconnects. If the client disconnects, I should probably send to the server. Uh, you know, I should effectively mimic a client close operation to the server there's like some cl basic cleanup that i need to do that i haven't done but there you go that is what a reverse proxy or at least my reverse proxy is attempting to do so one it will do filtering of any kind of bad actors uh two it will be doing authentication authentication is really simple and different I can explain that at another time. Don't worry about how I'm doing that, okay? Right now, don't worry about that. And three, effectively, what server to use or matchmaking. I'm calling it matchmaking, though that's probably not the appropriate term for it. But right now, we're just calling it matchmaking. All right, you get the idea. Because you could, you, could, you could imagine that the server then, uh, when I send a connection to the server, the server actually creates this correct set of games in which are the appropriate one for, say, this connection to jump onto and thus it actually does this like matchmaking within the server. This is just more like server selection more than matchmaking. Okay, so you get the idea. So let me kind of run through a little bit of the code. You know, again, I've never done this before. This is kind of like my first one. So the first thing I did is I created this whole simulation network in which I can ensure that certain things happen. Like this test should last no longer than five seconds. If it lasts longer than five seconds, I exploded. I should be able to hydrate the environment into a specific state such that I am able to make sure that there's like no servers, but I have all the tables and the SQLite, everything set up, all that good stuff. I can also pre-seed it with some table configuration, which would then create a bunch of connections and all that. So that way, if I want to run like simulated test environments, I could do that, which is something I actually want to explore next. I haven't got there yet. So there we go. So I have this no server file. If you look at the no server file, it, I mean, it's exactly what it is. It's just a SQLite file that has some basic information that looks like, uh, let me pull it up. I bet you I can pull it up really quickly. Hold on. Uh, data? E oh, no, 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 no. That's where the actual tables are. It will be configs. There we go. It's literally, that's how I'm generating. I'm actually building the configs by hand, and then it generates the SQLite in which then the environment generates the servers with all the active connections, and then hands me everything back in these tests. And so that's my whole idea is I'm going to fuzzy this this is where I'm going to do fuzzy testing. So I'll talk about simulation testing and fuzzy like next time. Right now, not very important, right? And so with that, I have like a little factory that will create new clients and then connect them and make sure that they've been connected and connected to a game server before it returns. I think that's kind of nice. It's nice. I can also like do like batch creation if I'm not mistaken. I can do like you create batch connections, create batch connections with weight groups, all that kind of stuff. So that way I can kind of control how my, you know, the whole thing behaves. All right. After that, I assert, I ensure that the client is connected not only to, uh, you know, not only to the matchmaking server, but also is connected to the game server. <clears throat> ensure that the environment or the stats of my entire server farm is exactly what it is. Disconnect the client and ensure that these stats are then the other way around. There's like a five second wait in here that it actually goes in here and ensures that this thing doesn't break anything. I don't know what that is. I was just playing with something. I'm not sure what just happened there, but don't worry about that. Anyway, so when we actually run this bad boy, you can see right here, produces a whole bunch of logs, blah, 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 does everything, and boom, actually quits, actually runs, gets all the way to the end, and no asserts have been kicked off. So I can officially connect, connect to a game server, 
send up my authentication, sure the authentication gets through, everything looks good, and then fish back through disconnect messages. Okay, fantastic. So now let's go to like the real part, okay? The the proxying part. So how proxy, at least as I understand it, these reverse proxies work, is that it's exactly what you think it would be, right? It just takes in these connections, create connections, and then just kind of passes the data back and forth. It's the new connections coming in, setting up rules and stuff around that to make sure that they behave the way they're supposed to, and then passing the data. And so that's kind of like the various things you can do. So the first thing I do when I get a new connection is I actually go to check, are you allowed to connect? Right now, I don't have any rules. Every Hey, you're all available to connect, right? Uh, after that, create some extra context wrappers and all that stuff, and then I go and handle the connection. Connection is pretty simple. I create two packet framers. These framers are going to read the incoming messages and turn them into my like hand-rolled packet formula because remember, we're doing TCP structured data, but that does not mean it's structured for you. You still have to structure it on the other side. All right, I have a little packet reader, which, oh man, this is just fantastic. I kind of alluded to that code earlier. And then what I do is I grab out the next packet. That first packet should come out and it should be um, what's called an auth packet. Obviously, as you can see here, I don't do any sort of error checking. We're not there yet, okay? This is kind of new. If there is no auth packet or it's not okay, then we remove the connection. Else, I then go and try to authenticate. Again, authentication. Nothing's happening, right? Okay, beautiful. So I make sure that it's authenticated. If there is an error, then I remove the connection again. Uh, then I go and match make. If I could not match make, remove the error again. If I go and uh, at that point, I create a new connection to the game server. If there's an error, remove the connection again. After that, create one more uh, game connection, create a new reader on the game connection uh, socket, and then ensure that I get a game server um, authentication back out, right? To make sure that I can actually go back to the client and say, hey, you've been authenticated, you're good to go. Go, run, and then I handle the life cycles. The life cycles is pretty fun too, right? It's I read every packet either coming from the game server or the client server. Right now, it's the exact same code. I did this intentionally. I didn't want to abstract this because I have a feeling like it's going to start deviating as time goes on, but right now it's not. Uh, so I, I just take the packet. If it is a connection close or a closed connection, then I just write it across the wire and then remove all the connections. Else, I just pass the packet back through. And if there's an error, remove the connection, right? Like, so it's it, pretty straightforward stuff and I do it on both sides. So I am doing that proxying where I am the man in the middle. The cool part though is with my packet formula, it actually doesn't require a lot. I do stuff like this where I actually uh, don't have to do a lot of work. So as the bytes come in, the uh, second and third byte or the second and third index, so the third and fourth byte is gonna be the length of the packet. So I actually just grab the length of the packet and then I, then I don't read anything, I don't parse anything. So it's pretty cheap to do all this. When I say pretty cheap, I mean it's pretty cheap. But uh, okay, this is me programming. Don't. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Anyway, so there you go. This is effectively what I'm doing. And I'm pretty happy about this, and I have a little context done to make sure everything's done. So the moment we're done, it also does this nice little, hey, it's time to leave here. I should probably put like a break in here. Break, huh? Huh? Well, what's going on here? I should probably do some sort of breaking. I forgot to do that. Uh, forgot, right? Obviously, some things need to happen. You see what's ha you see what's happening here? Some stuff needs to happen, right? Return. There you go. How does that sound? Uh, so I'm still kind of going through making sure everything's actually like quote unquote productionized because I actually want to launch this. I just have to, I have a really good idea for a simple game in NeoVim that can do all of this and work pretty, pretty well. And so we're not like, it's not far from being done. Can you believe that? It's actually going to work. It's actually going to be a, a thing. It's actually going to, uh, it's actually going to run. I don't, I can't even believe it. Anywho. So there you go. That's it. I'm proxying. I'm not even sure if this is a good idea, honestly. I'm not sure if I don't like that other idea of having a matchmaking server versus a game server. The reason why I don't like the game server is that if it just directly connects to a game server, I have this sneaking suspicion that people will then be able to take that and attack that that game server and try to ruin other people's games. But then again, if I'm doing a reverse proxy here, they can attack that. And if I can't pass the packets back and forth, well, that thing is also ruined for everybody else too. So it's kind of these weird trade-offs I'm playing around in my head and trying to figure out what can I do to make sure that that doesn't happen. I have some good ideas because I'm going to, you know, rate limit packets, ensure that certain behaviors are kind of met. The game servers themselves can also do some extra like understanding of the packets coming in. And if the person's just doing weird behavior, just close them down and kick them out. And if they, you know, if enough things happen, maybe it'll do some sort of like longer term you know, banning on certain IPs or whatever, you know, I still got to figure out all that stuff because I've never done it before. But I do, I made this tweet earlier and I'm not, okay, I also made this tweet. This is great. 
This is a great tweet. But I realize something is happening, which is whenever I start doing this, all of a sudden it's just like, it's time for me to do the uh, the EBPF, right? It's just like time for me to do my own packet filtering at the lowest possible level and create the reverse proxy all the way down at the most performant possible level ever created. I can feel it happening. It's probably going to happen. But right now, I'm just trying to have a moment of fun without losing my mabbles. Okay, I can feel the mabbles wanting to be lost. I don't want to lose them. I don't want to lose them. I'm going to try to stay focused. So because I know right away, the reason why I brought that up is I knew for a fact the moment I'm showing I'm doing like proxying and authentication and, and launching and creating servers and doing all the actual like server management. And by the way, when I do it, when I say I create servers, I, I do mean that. Uh, when you do matchmake, I have this idea of a just a server object that comes in, checks for the best server. If not, we create and wait for a server. And it's pretty straightforward. And so the create and wait actually for locally, it actually just spawns a new process. And that new process creates a TCP server and then says, hey, I'm ready to rock. And so we kind of do this whole like creating and waiting. And when it says, hey, I'm ready to rock, it actually launches data into a, a SQLite database. And then this waiting process is actually just waiting for, uh, what's it called? Just waiting for the server to put its data into SQLite. And once the data is in SQLite, it goes... All right, we're ready to rock. We got a server. Every All right, boys, let's pile in. And so we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, lots of danger still. Got a lot of things to think about. Like, oh, man, there's so many simple problems I haven't even thought about. Like, when creating a server, imagine you get, like, 2,000 connections in a second, and I have to create a server. I'm going to dump all 2,000 connections onto that server. What if that's too many connections, right? 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 You know, things that I should probably attempt to think about, which I have not. Anyways, uh, hope you enjoy that. Hope you enjoy this. Hey, do you like this? What are your thoughts? This has been fun. I've actually really enjoyed making this. This has been a lot of fun because I've never done scaling and trying to do everything myself from just like the most raw possible levels. Uh, but honestly, the most, the, the biggest takeaway I have is writing good simulations. I have some more ideas of how to write the simulation even better to where it, even client connections and placement and random connection drops and all that if simulated with a random number, will actually simulate also in the exact same order every time, which I think is going to be pretty dang good idea. I'm very, let's just say I'm very excited about it, okay? I'm very, very, very excited about this right now. All right, hey, the name. I had to turn off the recording with this hand too, so it just makes it really hard to say the primogen, and then I got to go over here. So, hey, the name, Ooh, left-handed. The name. Yes, my image is mirrored again.